نور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وما بعد I begin by praising Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator our sustainer our nourisher the one who gives us all the blessing in this dunya and has guided us into the fold of Islam which is the true guidance I thank him and we praise him for this great blessing and we also ask him Subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon his beloved prophet Akhirun Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family his companions his followers who believed in him till the day of qiyamah to come amin ya rabbal alamin that being said my brothers and sisters in islam imam ibn kathir who is a great mufassir of the quran in his tafsir he narrates an incident in which he says once a sahabi came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a sad face rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him oh my companion why are you looking sad what happened to you he said oh prophet of allah whenever i am with you i feel i am on the top of the world when i am in your company i am so much delighted i am i am f- feeling as if i have achieved everything in this dunya i am so happy but the moment i go back from your company go back to my family or go back to my business i feel i have lost everything you know i don't feel happy about being away from you i am waiting for always coming at the next moment when i will come back to you o prophet of allah soon the reality is you are going to die and i am going to die and you will be in the company of the prophets in the janna and i will not be able to see you in the janna o prophet of allah and that is what is making me sad subhanallah look at the concern of this sahabi this is what their concern was about the akhira their priority was akhira even in this dunya they are here but they are always focused and their priority was in akhira listening to this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became speechless he couldn't say anything he didn't know how to console the sahabi because his concern is genuine and it is a, a fact because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will die and he will die and we all will die and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be in the highest level of jannah in the company of the prophets and we don't know where we will end up with so at this point this uh, you know concern rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't know what to say how to console the sahabi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down jibril alaihi salam with a verse because allah wanted to console the sahabi because his concern was akhira this concern of the sahabi was genuine and he was worrying about his akhira allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down jibril alaihi salam with a verse in the quran in surah nisa verse number 69 allah says wa may yuti allah wa rasulahu subhanallah allah says whoever obeys allah and his prophet what happens to them Allah says wa man yuti Allah wa rasula fa ulaika ma allazina an'ama Allah alayhim to so whoever obeys Allah and his prophet they will be in the company of those upon whom Allah has showered his blessings wa man yuti Allah wa rasula fa ulaika ma allazina an'ama Allah alayhim who are they who, whose company is this من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن اولئك رفيقا سبحان الله الله says these people who ever obey allah and his prophet they will be in the company of those upon whom allah has showered his blessing who are they they are the prophets من النبيين the prophets والصديقين those who are truthful والشهداء those who are martyrs who gave away their life the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was salihin and those who are righteous and allah says crowns them by saying wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa what a beautiful company to have subhanallah this is the company we should have 
this is the company we should try to compete with one another we should strive ourselves to end up with but what is the condition wa may yuti allah wa rasuluhu do whos whoever obeys allah and his messenger it is not the one who has accumulated the most number of wealth or degrees or status or position the cars or the house these are the, not the people who will be in the company of this righteous group it is very simple condition it has got nothing to do with your color with your looks with your knowledge with you with your with your money with your wealth with your celebrity status with your following in the facebook and instagram with your likes and thumbs ups it has got nothing to do with it a person may be a mufti a hafiz a person may be a alim a allama whatever he is unless he obeys allah and his messenger he will not be in the company of this righteous group this is very clear this is the verse of allah subhanahu wa taala and for achieving this status this company because allah says this is the best company to have you see people today they are proud among them proud of themselves when they take pictures selfies with some celebrities with some actors some sportsmen or some politicians and they put their you know status um, you know profile picture in their in the social media hey look with whom i am I have taken picture look in whose company i am this means nothing to allah subhanahu wa taala what is important is obeying allah and his messenger so you end up with a company of the prophets the truthful truthful to allah and his prophet and his deen truthful to allah azza wa jalla is a great quality to have the promises we make to allah subhanahu wa taala and be truthful to that promise and those who in the company of the martyrs the status for whom there is no uh, account on the day of qiyamah they enter into jannah straight those who lost uh, sacrifice their life in the cause of allah subhanahu wa taala and those who are righteous people these are the company we should strive to have we should compete with one another not in this dunya competing with one another in the possessions we have the houses then in one step a baduin sahabi came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said o prophet of allah when is the sa when is this uh, the hour when is the sa is going to come when is the qiyamah is going to come he was just asking him in a hurry when is the sa is going to come rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said well what have you prepared for it he said i i love allah and his messenger that's it this is what he prepared for he just said well i love allah subhanahu wa taala and his messenger then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said well in that case you will be in the company of those who you love subhanallah this is an authentic hadith narrated by anas ibn malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported in imam bukhari and imam muslim rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you will be in the company of those whom you love so you are hurrying for the akhirah as if you are prepared for it and you are ready so if you love allah and his messenger then you will be in the company subhanallah this is so looks so easy but it's so difficult because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that you will die the way you live and you will be raised the way you die you will die the way you live your life if in the if from the morning when we wake up or fajr in the morning till the time we go for bed if our priority is in this dunya running after this dunya earning this dunya earning its its wealth its accumulations its it its power its positions its status 
this this mata ul ghurur the materials of deception if this is what is a priority of a person throughout his life he cannot expect to die in a state of lifting his finger saying shahada and and saying la saying la ilaha illallah in his tongue at the time of death this is not going to happen period at the time of the death the, the tongue will be like a mountain you cannot even move unless allah wills and that time it will be a reflection of the life you led in this dunya whatever lifetime you spent 30 40 50 70 80 years whatever the way you life you lived in this dunya that is how the end is going to be so allah so as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you will be in the company of those whom you love if we love the celebrities if we love the politicians if we love the influencers of the instagram and youtube and social media and the nba stars and bbs stars and whatever stars or our players as compared to allah and his messenger we will be in their company if we love the prophet of allah azza wa jal allah subhanahu wa taala and his Uh, rasulullah's companions we will be in their company it is no brainer straight forward as anas ibn malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who narrated this hadith he says when we heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you will be in the company of those whom you love we were all so happy because we loved abu bakr umar uthman and ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu meaning so we will be in their company subhanallah once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered masjid nabawi for praying his tahajjud and in the masjid nabawi there used to be a place some sahabas who used to live there they are called ahlu sufa very poor sahabas they don't do anything other than worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they stay in the masjid and uh, they just do only remembering of allah azza wa jal and they they don't have any house or business or job or family so one among them was rabia ibn qab al aslami radhiyallahu ta'ala an when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered he used to always help rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to prepare his salah prepare for his wudu and bring water and all those things so one day rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to pray tahajjud and he rabia ibn qab helped rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very happy and he was in a very good mood on that day so he asked rabia ibn qab o oh, rabia ibn qab ask me whatever you want he expected rabia ibn qab will ask something from the dunya something for his you know some for his money or for some benefit or some Uh, you know for his marriage so that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam can ask allah azza wa jal and allah can answer his dua because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he asked there is no barrier for his dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked rabia ibn qab o oh, rabia ibn qab ask me whatever you want rabia ibn qab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said o oh, prophet of allah i want to be in your company in jannah subhanallah this is what he wanted Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was shocked he never expected this answer then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked again okay rabbi ibn qab ask something else so that he thought that at least the second time rabbi ibn qab would ask for something from the dunya rabbi ibn qab said that's it to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i don't want anything else subhanallah this is the priority which the sahabis had their fikr their worry was akhirah they didn't expect anything from the dunya because this dunya is to pass this is going to pass anyways but their akhirah is the eternal life whether a person is a millionaire or a billionaire or a person is a homeless person his life is going to pass that time is going to pass 
whether he is white or black or man or woman his life is going to pass his time is going to pass nothing is going to stop not a second is going to stop for him having billions is not going to help delay his time or not having money is going to cause him to f- faster his time the time is going to pass so this dunya we have to leave anyways even if a person is granted the lifetime of nu alaihi salam 900 plus years this dunya is going to he has to leave the dunya but the akhirah is eternal khairu wa abqa khalidin fiha abada this is akhirah is better and everlasting and khalidin fiha abada and there will be eternal life without death and this the sahaba had understood very clearly that's why their focus and their priority was akhirah they were never worried about this dunya so they loved rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they used to be worried if what is going to happen for their akhirah if they are not going to be around the company of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they always focused on it the worry was where they will be ending up after the after their death their death the death is going to come any time nobody can avoid it it is a certainty imam hasan al basri says he was looking at a sheep which was grazing and he said the knife is sharpened the water is boiling and the and the and the table is ready for the slaughter of this ram the sheep but without unaware of this the sheep is grazing this is the reality of the humans we never know when we are going to die we live in this dunya as if we are going to live here eternally oblivious of our death the distance between us and our death is not a year not a minute not an hour it is just one breath that's why we say it's last breath just one breath so we have to work on our priority what is our priority our priority is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his deen and akhirah that doesn't mean we should abandon the dunya we have come into this dunya so it has got its objectives as i was discussing in the last reminder here we have an ancillary objectives on the side but our main objective in this dunya is to worship allah subhanahu wa taala but since we are in this dunya we have to live a life we need house we need clothes we need vehicle we need a family we need a income but these are all secondary objectives but the main primary objective is our akhirah allah subhanahu wa taala and his deen and whoever focuses on this he he becomes successful so for that allah says wa may yuti allah wa rasulahu fa whoever obeys allah and his messenger obey allah subhanahu wa taala his commands and his prophets the way rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught has the as the deen through his sunnah obey his commands whatever step we take in our life we have to be conscious of whether i am following the commands of allah and his messenger or i am disobeying them with this action that shows our priority we can take in some a few examples to see to value to um, judge ourselves what is our priority is we can spend hours and hours and hours and time especially during the last one year we are all stuck inside houses because of the lockdowns and the pandemic but we can spend 
hours and hours watching videos, movies, music, songs, uh, playing games and uh, Xbox and PlayStation and we never get bored. But we cannot spend time more than 15-20 minutes to listen to some reminders, some Islamic lectures and information. This shows what is our priority. We can spend time, hours and hours on entertainment, but we cannot spend even half an hour without losing concentration on listening to uh, the, the Islamic lectures and reminders. We see people in their 40s and 30s and 50s still working hard to, uh, you know, enroll themselves in some programs, some colleges, some, uh, you know, certification programs to further their education, their knowledge or their job prospects or, you know, the information into the skills of the dunya that is required. Obviously, it is better to have all those, but they can afford their time and money and effort and energy and concentration to attain those, the sciences, programs and certifications and diplomas and whatever. But they can't spend time to learn the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. When it comes to learning the deen, learning the Quran or, you know, learning the commands of Allah Azza reading the Quran, the Tajweed, whatever, they can't spend the time. But when it comes to the sciences of the dunya, age is not a factor, money is not a factor, time is not a barrier. So this shows what is the priority we have. When we go and meet someone, we want to meet someone, or when we go to a party, when we go to a wedding, when we go to meet somebody with a power of a position or we go for a job interview, we dress up ourselves the best. We try to look the best. We perfume ourselves. We take a shower. We dress properly. We dress breast clothing. We prepare plan ahead of time what the dress should we be wear. All those things. So that we should look good in front of whoever we want to show. And somebody comes to see us in our house, we want to make sure we change our clothes, we look good. But when we go for Salah, when we go for Juma, when we go for, you know, to the Masjid to pray, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, even inside our house when we pray, we are going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Malik of the the entire universe, the seven heavens and the seven earth he has created, whatever he owns, the dominions of everything in the universe, whatever is in between and whatever is underneath, he is the owner and the creator. When we want to stand in front of him, we are not conscious of what we have, what we are wearing. We just go and stand. We don't even bother to think how do we look. We just go and just join the prayer. This shows what is the priority, what we give. Whereas look at those Sahabas, they were very conscious about their priority. Their priority was Akhirah, their priority was Allah, their priority was His Messenger Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says also in the Quran, Allah says, The time has come. The time for the humans have come. This is the opening, beginning, number, first verse in Surah Al-Anbiya. Surah Al-Anbiya is one of the greatest surah in the Quran. It talks about all the prophets, their tests, their trials, their lives, how they went through so much of difficulty. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, Surah, they started the first verse by warning. The hisab, the accountability for the humans have come very close to them, very near. But 
they are in ghafla they are in heedlessness they are just you know lost themselves in heedlessness as if they are going to be here forever there is no hour is going to come you know there is no accountability anything the moment they die their hisab kitab their accountability starts at different stages we never know when is going to be our time that's what allah says ik tarab alin nasi hisab the hisab has come very close for them wa hum ghafla wa hum fi ghaflatin mu'ridun they are they have indulged themselves in the heedlessness then he says ma ya'tihim min dhikrin mir rabbihim whatever new any new reminder comes to them whether it is with the quran the prophets the lectures the scholars the the khatibs whoever any re- new reminder comes and from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any reminder comes to them muhdasatin illa illa stamau wa hum yalabun they listen to it only in a playful mode they just don't give it a heed we remind people through the quran but it doesn't give any effect to them they just take it casually they don't listen to it seriously if they listen to the quran seriously if they listen to the reminder seriously their life would be a big change but we see the people are going more towards the worse because these things they the reminders from the quran the reminder from allah subhanahu wa taala the teachings of the prophet doesn't give any impact effect to them because they have they are indulged into the heedlessness we have to be careful we have to wake up we have to give the priority we have to decide what should be our priority right now the way we lived our life in the past is fine one sincere repentance with allah subhanahu wa taala allah is ready to forgive us one sincere repentance allah is waiting for it allah is ready to forgive all our heedlessness of the past today we need to decide what should be our priority that would decide where we would end up in the day of qiyamah in whose company if we lead the lifestyle of firaun haman kharun we will end up in their company if we lead the lifestyle and we love prophet and his uh, you know his his companions and righteous people we will end up in their company the choice is ours we have to choose today whose company we want to end up with aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wallahu ghafurur rahim assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh